Hey, what a hell of a day from you, from your team. You must be very, very satisfied with the way it finishes. Yeah, I'm really happy uh, and surprised. Uh, uh, I was feeling quite good all day, but you know, these kind of days is a bit special and you need a kind of a lot of luck. Uh, but the team worked perfectly for me and uh, all after mass was brought back from the breakaway and then uh, yeah, uh, when the team works like this, it minimizes all the luck you need. When you saw uh, Matteo Jorgensen take off, you knew you, you had to go for it. It was the moment. No, actually not. I thought uh, Remco or, or Primoz or, yeah, or one of the the guys high up in GC would close it. Uh, but then uh, I tried to pull a little bit and they let me go. Or gave me a few meters and then I just went off and uh, then uh, Brandon uh, joined me and uh, yeah, we could close to Matteo. You, uh, you've already won stages, big stages, World Tour races, uh, Tour of Switzerland. The first time you win on, on Paris Nice means a lot, I suppose, for you. Yeah, I love to race uh, in France and especially this area. Uh, I had an emotional win in uh, Hodvar last year. We was really close to here also. And um, yeah, I just love racing in this area. And it's the first of the year for me and that's uh, always a special one. But it's not over yet, still two days to go. Tomorrow is a very tough one. You're 52 seconds behind in the GC, behind uh, Brandon McNulty. Can you still win Paris Nice? I mean, there's have been bigger miracles in cycling than uh, if I should win the Paris Nice, but uh, I think uh, the other guys are stronger than me. Today uh, was a bit of a weird way to win because uh, I played on me being down in GC and them uh, uh, having such a big gap on me, and uh, it's not the nicest way to win. Uh, and uh, those guys were stronger than me today, I think. But you're in the shape of your life? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean,. Uh, uh, I feel better than before I won to the Swiss last year and uh, I think I'm in a really good place right now. One last question, uh, based on that GC, do you still have the, the team time trial in the back of your mind? Because you did lose a lot of time, mostly because of the weather. Yeah, we, we, we lost time there, but then you maybe I wouldn't have this stage win today because they wouldn't let me go with the, this amount of GC time. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy where I am now. A lot. Thank Thanks you. Mateo, uh, congratulations. What a day. Uh, you must be very satisfied with yourself. Maybe a little bit disappointed not to have won the stage? Yeah, I, uh, well, thank you. I was going, to be honest, I was riding for GC today. Um, I had a feeling it was going to be a GC day, just looking at the weather conditions, and I thought it would rain a bit earlier. And yeah, I think it turned out to be uh, quite a hard day. And. And yeah, like you said, I, I, I'm I'm not disappointed not win the stage. Um, I guess I'm just a little disappointed at how it how it happened uh, with with Skelmos there just kind of sitting on for a while. But uh, yeah, that's that's the game, I guess. Um, and yeah, he had a really strong sprint in the end, so chef out of him. But you were the one to attack. Uh, you were the one to to, to gain some time. Uh, it was important to uh, to take off early on that that uh, final climb. Yeah, uh, I really expected that there'd be some hesitation. Um, I thought, yeah, I expected Remco or Primoz to really go super hard on the steep part, and yeah, Primoz went early, and then um, kind of I knew that around the last switchback, like 500 meters before the KOM, it was going to flatten out just a little bit, and I thought that'd be a good moment, and yeah, thankfully uh, those guys kind of looked at each other and they let me go, and then I was pretty surprised that we got such a big gap in the end. Um, uh, it was, uh, I think we had good legs in front, but they must have been looking around behind a bit. The gap in the GC is 23 seconds. Uh, Brandon McNulty, your fellow American in front of you. Um, can you win Paris Nice? <laughs> uh, I definitely won't hold anything back. Brandon's a good friend, but um, yeah, the, the race is on now. This is a position that uh, I've always wanted to be in in my life. So yeah, I'll give everything. You live, uh, you live in Nice. Uh, what, what, first of all, what do you know about uh, tomorrow's uh, finish in La Madone du Tel? Do you know it well? I know it really well. Uh, if you ask any of my friends, it's actually one of my favorite climbs in Nice. Um, I was super happy to see the news yesterday that they, that they found a solution and, and they changed it to Madone du Tel. Uh, I remember even watching Zacharin's win there a few years ago, and yeah, I ride it quite often. It has one of the best views in all of Nice on top. You can see the Alps behind and the sea on one side, so I'm looking forward to it. So see you tomorrow in yellow? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much. Um, expecting fireworks tomorrow or on <laughs> Sunday, maybe not today. Were you first of all surprised by, uh, by the way uh, 
it uh, it finished today. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. When I came to this race, I was thinking, you know, you have a few hard days and then two sprint days before the mountains, and then yeah, we looked closer into it the last day, and then I was like, oh, this is a the finishing circuit is quite hard. So yeah, this morning we expected teams to do something, and then yeah, the way the race played out before for the break to go and stuff was it was pretty obvious that it would be an aggressive fight. So. In the end, yeah, exactly what it was. And you were flying. Uh, the yellow jersey is back uh, on, on your shoulders. Uh, maybe you weren't expecting that either. No, definitely not. I knew it would be uh, attacks on the circuit, but I didn't really expect to take yellow back. But here we are. <laughs> It's far from over. Uh, two more uh, days to go. You have a 23-second advantage over uh, Matteo Jorgensen. Uh, looking optimistic for overall victory on this Paris Nice? I mean, yeah, we're in a good position now, but yeah, I can never get ahead of yourselves. We have two, two hard days coming, probably with bad weather and all the whole everything. So we'll take day by day, but yeah, we'll go tomorrow as hard as we can. Fantastic for uh, American cycling. Two yeah. Americans in the in the first two positions of uh, five days. That's great. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, there's beside my teammates that there was one guy I would work really well with in a break like this was was Mateo. So that yeah, was fun. Just like uh, as juniors, we were doing the same. So. <laughs> So what can we expect for tomorrow? It's a shorter stage. It's not the the finish in, in Oron due to, to the um, to the snow, uh, but it's still hard. What's uh, what's the plan? Uh, yeah, we had to defend. Obviously, I expect chaos, especially shorter days. Are always like this. Probably a big fight for the break, and then yeah, the climb is is going to be full gas. But oh, I think we'll just have to ride as well as a team and, and defend the jersey. But we did see that uh, today. The leader of UAE was Brandon McNulty. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we came here with Joao and I, but in the end, I was able to go on this climb, so here we are. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Magic Calvus takes the glory and takes stage honors as Brandon Remco Avenepoel, fourth on the day. Second time in, uh, what? Second time in three stages that he's been fourth. Once again, behind a lead break, which will turn out to be significant. Wasn't found wanting in his uh, willingness to chase the riders up front, but they were so well coordinated. Parry points were the first of the uh, Decathlon AG Tour riders. Roglic disappointed.